Radians. One radian is the measure of a central angle such that the radius of the circle has the same length as the corresponding arc. What I'm going to do to demonstrate this definition is I'm going to cut this pipe cleaner to be, and obviously this is not very precise, to be the size of the radius. So there we go. So give or take, you know, that's about the size of the radius. Now I'm going to go out here and mark up where I'm lining it up and where I'm beginning. Okay. One radian is the measure of a central angle such that the radius, which is this, of the circle has the same length as the corresponding arc. So now I'm going to take this. The radius is normally straight, but I'm going to take this and I'm going to bend it. That's why I picked a pipe cleaner, right? And I'm going to bend it. Now it's there. I need that length to also be of the arc. So there we go. I'm going to match up the colors that I underline the words with. So the radius in blue, so the purple arc and the blue radii are allegedly the same. I mean, again, I didn't use a very precise tool. I used a pipe cleaner. The central angle is an angle whose vertex is located at the center of a circle. Here is the central angle theta. Since the length of this radius is equivalent to the length of the arc, and for arc length, we tend to use the letter S. Since R, the radius length, and S, the arc length, are equal, they must form an angle, theta, and theta has a measure of one radian. One radian is approximately 57.3 degrees. When we work with radians, we're really going to focus on radians as fractions of pi, but right now I'm just introducing you to the definition of one full radian. So again, one full radian comes from its definition where a radius and an arc length are the same. The angle formed is defined to be one radian. Radians are the only thing in math that actually don't have a unit. So we really don't label radians with anything. But right now I'm using the word radian because we're just learning about it. Now, do you remember what the formula is for circumference? We have two formulas that you worked with in geometry, area of a circle and circumference of a circle. And people do tend to mix the two of those up. Area is two dimensional. We can color it in, it takes up space. Circumference is a distance, so that's really one dimensional. Try not to mix up these two equations. The area equation, area equals pi r squared, two dimensional for area, and circumference is two pi r. r is to the first power, so it's one dimensional. Now, why am I bringing these up? A few reasons. One, we just talked about arc length. Arc length is a fraction of circumference. Might not be a bad idea to refresh our memory on that. Like I mentioned before, we're going to use S to represent arc length. Is is a form of the verb to be. Any form of the verb to be or the verb to have will probably mean equals when you're translating a word problem or sentence into an equation. A fraction is going to be quite literally a fraction. Of means multiply and circumference is 2 pi r. So if we had to write a formula for arc length it would be s equals fraction of 2 pi r. What fraction are we talking about? Well, there's two ways you can look at it. If we're dealing with a problem in degrees, the fraction would be theta over 360 degrees. So if you had a 30 degree angle, you would look at 30 over 360 as the fraction of the circle that we're concerned with, fraction of the circumference. If it were in radians, here's the catch. Radians have been around for a while. 
we've been working with radians for a long time. In fact, 2 pi is in this circumference problem because it is a radian measure. 2 pi is actually one full revolution in radians. That means 2 pi radians is equal to 360 degrees. Again, 2 pi radians will equal 360 degrees. So what does that tell us about our arc length formula? S arc length is a fraction of circumference, the angle, if we're dealing with radians, will be theta over 2 pi, because 2 pi radians is 360 degrees. They're equal to each other, just like 12 inches is equal to 1 foot, just like 60 minutes is equal to 1 degree. Now, this equation can reduce. We have a 2 pi in our denominator, and we have a 2 pi in the numerator. That means this 2 pi and this 2 pi reduces down to 1. So you'll often learn a formula for arc length of s equals r theta. I like to give the background on this, though, because if you just try to do the radius times the angle, you're not necessarily going to get the correct arc length because this formula only works when your angle is already in radians. If your angle's in degrees, you're going to want to use the formula we have over here. So in conclusion, whenever you're finding arc length, your best bet is just to remember that it's a fraction of the circumference. Arc length S is equals a fraction, well, look at your problem, is it degrees or radians, of multiply circumference, 2 pi r. And again, I brought this up because 2 pi is actually a radian measure. It's equal to the radian measure of 360 degrees. We've been using it for quite some time. And it makes sense because one full revolution is really quite relevant to the circumference because it's the entire perimeter of the circle. Similar to finding arc length, we also found area of a sector in geometry, and I'm just going to review that quickly since we just reviewed arc length. Area of a sector is a fraction of the area of a circle. So this is going to work out the same way. I'm just going to call this area sub sector. We don't have a letter that we really use. Is, is a fraction, there's my fraction bar again, of multiply the area of a circle pi r squared. Now, this can really go two ways. If we're dealing with an angle in degrees, the angle is again looked at as theta over 360, but if the angle is in radians, then we have theta radians out of 2 pi times pi r squared. That could reduce pi's cross out and we're left with theta over 2 times r squared. And again, that's for angles in radians. The area of a circle can be looked at in smaller chunks and we can find area of a sector just like we could look at a small piece of the circumference and find arc length. And the area of a sector is sort of just like the area of this pizza slice right there. One full revolution of a circle can be measured as 360 degrees. A full revolution of a circle can also be measured using radians which we normally write without any units. The angle measure of one full revolution is actually 2 pi radians, that same 2 pi we see in our circumference formula. While this is great to know and very important, it's not really a conversion factor. Whenever you have a conversion factor, 
it's something like one foot is 12 inches. You wouldn't say two feet is 24 inches, as though that's how you remember the relationship between inches and feet. That being said, I want to take this relationship and I just want to simplify it a little bit. So it's important that you realize while 360 degrees equals 2 pi radians, we could also say that 180 degrees equals pi radians. So if we're going to do any converting from degrees to radians or from radians to degrees, similar to how we did decimal degrees to degrees, minutes, seconds, and vice versa, we need a conversion factor so that we know what goes on top and what goes on bottom. And using pi over 180 or 180 over pi is going to be the quickest way to get the answers we're looking for. Let's practice converting from degrees to radians now. I've set up five examples and I'm going to do the first one with you and then you're going to try the four after this on your own. 60 degrees needs to be converted to radians. That means that the degrees needs to divide out of the problem and radians needs to be left in your answer. We're going to multiply by something where a degree value will be in my denominator in this case and a radian value which matches it will be in the numerator. What number of radians equals what number of degrees? Check your notes. Pi radians equals 180 degrees. This is our ideal conversion factor. I'm going to cross out a degree symbol from both the numerator and denominator, and I'm also going to cross out a zero. In other words, I'm going to divide the top and bottom by 10. 6 over 18 reduces to 1 over 3, and that leaves us with just pi over 3. That answer is perfect just the way it is. 60 degrees is equal to pi over 3 radians. If 180 degrees is equal to pi radians, it makes sense that 60 degrees, which is actually a third of 180, would equal one third of pi radians. In the next minute, I would like you to press pause and to try the next four examples on your own. I would like you to model B, C, D, and E after example A. The only difference is, for example E, I would like you to take it a little bit further and also, upon completion and having your answer in terms of pi, to use your calculator and find the approximate decimal solution. All you'll do is type your answer with pi in it into the calculator and write out the decimal value to the hundredths place. That's two decimal places out. After you've done them and you really think you've got it, press pause again and see if you did them correctly. Now because our recent lesson had us convert from decimal degrees to degrees, minutes, seconds, I'm actually not going to show you every single step for these examples right now. I'm only going to give you the answer and it's up to you to make sure that you're able to get these correct answers on your own. I know that you're capable of doing it, you just gotta give it a good try. B should be five pi over six when you finish. C should be negative pi over four when you finish. And D should be pi over two when you're finished. These answers should make sense when you think of them as fractions of pi or think of the degree values as fractions of 180 degrees. Now let's look at example E. After converting 107 degrees to radians, crossing out my degree symbols, and writing out my answer in terms of pi, I could potentially leave my answer as 107 pi over 180. But once you put it in the calculator, you should get that it equals approximately 1.87 radians. You should definitely use the pi button for a question like this.
Now we're going to do the same thing we just did, but in the other direction. We're practicing converting from radians to degrees. We're going to set up a table just like we did on the other examples, except the column to the right of my initial value will be flipped or the reciprocal. Now I have pi over 6 times 180 degrees divided by pi. We're still able to reduce both pi values out of this problem. We're left with 1 sixth times 180 degrees. The degrees did not cross out in this example, and that's good because we want degrees in our final answer. 1 over 6 times 180 degrees is the same as 180 degrees divided by 6, and we get 30 degrees for our answer. Now we're able to tweak this method just a little bit and get the same answer, and you might feel more comfortable with it. Now if you've ever played the game Whack-A-Mole, where you use the little cushy hammer guy to whack the moles into the hole, this is what I kind of think of when I use this next method. I imagine the whack-a-mole is me whacking the, say, pi over 6 in example A. I whack it down so that the 6 in the denominator gets pushed down into that empty bottom box. This way, I don't have any fractions inside of an entire box to potentially get me confused or mess me up. Then we just cross out from top and bottom and multiply things that are next to each other just like normal and it makes things easier. So let's try this on example B. If I were to set up the table and then whack the top of the 3 pi over 2, it would push that 2 into the bottom box. So now I just have 3 pi on top and 2 on bottom. I'll still multiply by 180 degrees over pi so that I'm converting from radians to degrees. I reduce my pi's from top and bottom, and I could even reduce the 180 and the 2. That leaves me with 3 times 90 degrees, which is 270 degrees. And that's all there is to it. So now, after you look over A and B again, I want you to try examples C, D, and E on your own. Example E, I want you to turn into a decimal and round out to the tenths place, please. Press pause and give these a good try. Write out all your work and check your answers when you're ready. That's the end of today's lesson. I hope you're able to describe what a radian is, and I hope you're able to convert to and from radians and degrees, and I also hope you still remember how to convert to and from decimal degrees to degrees, minutes, seconds.